All right, welcome everybody. Thank you guys for coming. My name is Heather Anima, for those of you who don't know me. And we have been doing a couple of these um, intentional parent discussions or talks over the last few months. We're trying to do about one a quarter. And we're just really focusing in on kind of hot topics as it um, relates to technology. And so we've touched on a lot of things. We've touched on social media. We've touched on screen health, general screen health, and what that looks like for our kids. Um, we've talked about why our phones are addicting and how they get like that. Um, tonight, we wanted to give you just some really practical advice on, um, we know we need to limit screen time, but how do we do that? And so we have Ginny Zobel here. And she's got two girls at Sioux Falls Christian. She has been at Wireless World for almost 18 years, she told me. Um, she is going to just talk to us about some of those, like you said, practical advice on just how to set limits, how to set restrictions, kind of talk through some of those issues. Then we also have Shelly here. Shelly is here really as our Android expert tonight, and Ginny is more of our <laughs> Apple expert. <laughs> and so um, they are going to be taking questions at the end, um, but you are also free to ask questions during if you have something that comes up. And I do want to encourage questions. Um, we ran this event on Monday morning with um, just moms and a couple dads were here as well, but I think the reason it was so good is because people were just vulnerable and asked a lot of really good questions, so we just want to encourage you to do that. A couple things, um, we are going to be recording this tonight, so if friends or anyone asks, you can tell them that we'll be sending this out within the next few days. Also, we will be shutting it off before the end when we all ask questions so that you don't have to feel concerned about that. Um, and what else? If you haven't signed in with your name and email address when you came in, please do that if you want to get the presentation sent out to you. So we'll be sending that as well. Otherwise, we'll give it to Jack, to Jenny. All right, we were worried if anybody was gonna come tonight, so we're really glad that so many of you came. We have church night tonight, so I dropped my kids off at, at Gems, and so hopefully you guys can be distract-free tonight as we talk about this. So, like Heather said, um, my name is Jenny Zobel. Um, I've been with Wireless World for 18 years. Uh, Vince Lubin, he's a strong supporter of Sioux Falls Christian as well. He's one of our owners, so I just wanted to point him out as well. Then Shelly Van Borst is here with me too, and she's a business account manager lead. So we've seen things start from flip phones, where I was trying to just sell text messaging <laughs> to our customers. LG was our number one manufacturer at that time. Now LG isn't even in our stores anymore. So things have tremendously changed um, just in the 18 years. And one of those big things is when I started in the industry in 2005, Facebook had just kind of launched uh, when I was coming out of college. And so these are some of the stats that I took from the Social Dilemma. Have any of you watched that on Netflix? It's very, very good. It's eye-opening to hear the people that started Facebook, Instagram, just how they intended for things to be good with Facebook, how they intended for likes just to be spreading love, and that's not what it has become. So um, the reason that we're here is because when you give a child a device or a phone, they have access to everything, okay? So we're really here to help you guys with the tools so that they don't accidentally come across something that they're not ready for, okay? So the first stat here, uh, by the time someone is 16 to 17 years old, 78% of kids have been uh, exposed to, stumbled across, or sent by someone else some sort of pornography. And I don't know about you, that, but that scares me tremendously, even the 11 to 13 year olds, which is right about where my age girls are. Suicide rate. Um, girls from the ages 15 to 19 suicide rates have increased by 70% 2009 to 2015. Even our younger girls, 10 to 14 suicide rate has increased by 151%. And that is a direct correlation with 
social media, getting everyone's approval, all of that. So if you haven't watched The Social Dilemma, I would encourage you to. Heather said you guys have talked about some of the statistics, uh, smartphone addiction statistics, you guys can see that there, but on the bottom, if you can see that, it talks about teenage smartphone addiction. The one I want to call out is uh, feel lonely, anxious, or upset without their phones. 56% of teenagers feel that way. So if they have left their phone at home, they're feeling anxious or lonely, which is interesting because social media actually was built to build more of a community, and actually people are much more lonely now because of that. Um, after we go through the iOS system, um, we're gonna have a fun activity where I'm gonna have you guys look at your phones, how much you guys are on it as well. So really the other reason that we're here is really to know that it's worth your time to set up these parental controls on your devices. It's, if you don't know how to, please ask. We're here, we can talk with you afterwards if you have additional questions, but it's really, really worth your time, okay? So I'm gonna talk about the iOS family and Shelby's gonna talk about the Android family. So with uh, talking about it's worth your time, just a really quick story. When I was a, um, a sophomore in high school, it was the early 2000s, we got our first compact computer. How many of you remember compact? Like it was the <laughs> coolest brand at Best Buy. We had dial up internet and I had MSN Messenger and I was messaging all of my friends all the time. Well, I went into chat rooms, you guys. I shouldn't have been in chat rooms. Like I was chatting with people from across the country like, and my parents had no clue because they had no idea about this internet thing, right? I had to set up the answering machine, the DVD player, all of that, because they were just like, oh, you just do it. And I was a really good kid, and I still was like, I was curious. Like, oh, I wonder who this person is. I wonder who this person is. And so I just would encourage you guys that even if you feel like, oh, my kid would never do this, every kid, teenager, they're curious. Well, I wonder who this person is, or I wonder if I click on this link, what will happen? And really, kids as minds, they're not ready to stop looking at something. Um, I had all the parental controls, I thought, down on Kenzie's iPad, and I let her get this one app, and it was over Christmas break, and I got home, and I looked at her usage, and she was on it for six hours. Like, how can you be on this thing for six hours? But they are not, their brains are not developed yet to know, okay, I better put that down. I just need to step away. They're just not ready for that. So that's why it's really worth your time to figure out how to stop or limit their usage because they're just not mature enough. And that's not their fault. That's how God made them. They're just not quite mature, not mature enough. Okay, so we're gonna go into the practical things with iOS. So with the Apple family, just keep in mind that everybody has to have their own Apple ID. So if you are sharing Apple IDs across different members of your family, they do have to have separate Apple IDs. This will help you when you set it up. So you can set it up as a child's account so that they, you don't have to have a credit card on file that actually goes back to the adult but just make sure that every person has their own Apple ID. Back when we first had Apple, back in 2010, everyone was sharing Apple IDs because they wanted to share music and all of that. Well, they've gotten much better with this. So these are just some screenshots of how you can invite a family member. And so if, you would, if someone already has an Apple ID or you can create a child's account. So really, the question that came up quite a bit on Monday, the only time that you would need your child's device is for them to accept the initial invitation. Otherwise, everything that I show you, you can do from your iPhone or your iPad. So if you need to change some restrictions, you can do that. You don't actually need their physical device. They just need to accept your initial invitation. So this is called family sharing. So there's a lot of stuff within family sharing. One of the perks of this is you can share like your music um, 
um, subscription to that. You can share your cloud storage and you can see each other's location. So those are some of those perks. So family sharing will save you some money that way that everybody's sharing those. And then we'll get into the um, screen time with this. So you would go to settings, tap your name, they would accept that invitation. And then when you join the family, you can confirm your account information and they can opt in to those features. Okay. Now we're gonna get into the fun stuff with screen time. So once you actually get to screen time, okay, there are six things that you can set up just within screen time, okay? Content and privacy, always allowed. Communication safety, communication limits, app limits, and downtime. We're gonna go through those six things. I'm gonna start from the bottom and go up because once you tie them all together, it makes sense of how they have things set up, okay? So the first thing we're gonna go into is content and privacy restrictions. So once you turn this on underneath your child's name, you're gonna be asked to make a passcode. Make this passcode something that your children do not know. Should not be the same as the code that you unlock your phone with, but something different that they wouldn't be able to guess. So once you turn that on, you're gonna make that code, they confirm it. We heard on Monday that someone made it so secure that she forgot her own code. Um, so make it something that you can remember or maybe write it down somewhere. Um, but yeah, she had it locked down pretty good. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do just within the privacy and content is prevent iTunes and App Store purchases. So right in here, you can just say, nope, they can't even install apps, they can't delete apps. They also need to require a passcode when they purchase those. So right off the bat, you can say, hey, they can either download stuff or they can't. All right? So that's the first thing in content and privacy. The second thing in content and privacy is allowed so when we sell an iPhone to someone, it comes with all these pre-built apps from Apple. Mail, Safari, FaceTime, all of that stuff is preloaded. If you're a child that has, is like 10 years old, you probably need like three things. You need to be able to call, text, maybe have the camera. So you can actually turn everything off. They don't even see it. It's not like grayed out or anything. It just doesn't even show up. So you can turn all of those things off. If they want to, you know, if they want their camera, you can turn that on. If they want music, you can turn that on. But all of these are pre-loaded apps from Apple, and you guys can just turn them off completely. They don't even need to see them, okay? So for my kids, I don't even have them have access to Safari at all, or mail. They don't need, they, don't, they have a mail account, but they don't need it. So you can just turn all of that stuff off. Wallet, they're not purchasing anything, so you can just turn that off too. Okay, the second piece, with, or sorry, the third piece within content and privacy, the apps that you have allowed for them to have, you can actually allow for what ratings that you want them to be able to see. So if you do allow them to have music, then you can make it that it's all clean, right? There's not gonna be any explicit music. So that's just within the music app that Apple gave. Music videos, you can, you know, music videos aren't what they used to be. They're kind of, they're kind of weird. So those are in, <laughs> in the music app. You can turn those off. Movies, again, this comes just the movies from Apple. You can just make those PG. TV shows, books, apps, app clips. So all of those, you guys control what they can and cannot see. 
okay? And I actually would encourage you guys to do this on your own devices too, because if your kids grab your device and they're looking up something, it probably would be good if they didn't stumble across something on your device too. So I would actually go into content and privacy restrictions on your own screen time and um, do that. I actually had that with music. There was a song that came on and I couldn't press stop quick enough. <laughs> so yeah, we've all been there. All right, so web content. So if you decide to give your kids the Safari access, then you can do web content. So you can do unrestricted. They would have access to anything. If they search for something, they can look it up. If you limit adult websites, it's going to do its best to not allow the kids to do anything uh, that would be pornographic. But, you know, there are some things that seem to slide in there. Allowed websites, so then you can list specifically what websites that you only want them to have access to. So if you wanted them to have access just to Sioux Falls Christian's website or um, another website, you can allow it here, okay? Never allow, so you can also add never allowed websites there too. YouTube is, YouTube is tricky because YouTube We'll just continue to play videos, you guys know that, right? And they sometimes will sneak things in that don't necessarily fall under adult websites, but it's just right on the line. And speaking from experience, that's, you know, it's like, oh, it's really, it's really not that bad. It was just a preview to a movie. And it was like, oh, you liked this one? How about this one? And then it just continues to play. So YouTube, makes me super nervous, so I have that blocked, like even on my devices as well. Quick question. Yeah. So, I block YouTube on my kids' tablets, mm -hmm. but then they want to watch the Sioux Falls Christian channel. Yes. Is there any way to allow just a certain channel on YouTube? So, if you create an account with YouTube, then there's parental restrictions within that app that you can do. And we'll talk about external apps here too. That's a good question. Okay, so we're still just in content and privacy. So the next thing, allow changes to privacy settings. So uh, we went through the first three there, share my location, allow. And then the biggest one I wanna point out here is passcode changes don't allow. So you guys should know what your child's passcode is to their tablet or iPhone. And so you shouldn't allow them to be able to change it because that's probably an agreement that you should have with them of, hey, we always have access to the content that you have or the text messages. So I would encourage you to say that they can change their passcode for that. Okay, so we're back to screen time. So we covered content and privacy restrictions Next, we're going to do is always allowed, okay? So this goes with additional apps that you may have let your child download. So you can always allow certain apps, okay? So these are limit who Kenzie can communicate with during downtime, limits apply to phone, FaceTime, messages and cloud contacts, so that's the contacts piece. So I allow that she can always contact even outside of downtime, which we'll get into in a little bit. And then allowed apps. Always allowed apps are available during downtime. And if you selected the all apps and categories in the time limit. So we'll get into time limit as well. But these are ones that don't get turned off after downtime and screen time. So you can always allow them to be able to have access to their camera or to music, okay? So you can always allow those. Everything else that you may have downloaded or given them access to would be turned off after screen time has been used or downtime. So this is something new with screen time. Um, communication, safety. So this is, um, 
Sensitive photos in messages. So messages can detect nude photos before they are sent or viewed on your child's device and provide guidance and age-appropriate resources to help them make a safe choice. Apple does not have access to these photos. So what happens is if a child gets a message that's questionable, or a photo that's questionable, they will block it, and they will have this message that pops up. So they can message a grown-up, ways to get help, or block contact. If they decide still, um, so if they can message an adult, but if the child still chooses to view or send an image that contains nudity, they actually will pop up twice and say two messages to them. This photo could be sensitive. Are you sure you want to view? So they kind of prompt them again, like, are you sure you want to do this? And, and they say again, it's your choice, but want to make sure that you feel safe. So a little bit of guilt, I think, coming in here, which is good, but this is something that's new. So this is just in iMessage that this would populate. So something new that we learned as we were. So it doesn't necessarily stop it, it just it, it warns them. Yes. Hey. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. All right, the next piece of screen time, so we're gonna go up on that list of six items, communication limits. So this is um, who you want them to communicate with during the day or during downtime. So you guys can get very specific, like you can only contact grandpa, grandma, mom and dad after nine o'clock or before 6 a.m. So you can be that specific with them. Um, you can also limit, um, you, can, you can change the contact card so you can actually approve people before they actually add people to their contacts. So you can choose who they can contact, who they can't. So with Kenzie's I have everyone. She can add people as she needs and then allow contact editing. So this would just be up to you um, how you want your kids to communicate with or text message phone calls, FaceTime, all of that. All right, the next thing is app limits. So the again, the apps that you have allowed for them to have on their screen, maybe the apps that you allowed them to download, this is where you would set up the time limit, okay? So in here, you can turn that on, and then it gives you the option for different categories. So you can say, so for my kids, they get 30 minutes a day. Whether it's the camera, or it's Roblox, um, they have a couple of games that they have on there, but once they hit 30 minutes, they can request more time, and the request comes to me and my husband. We can approve it, or we can decline it. So we can approve it for an hour, 15 minutes, all day, or just decline it. And it was kind of cute. Last night, I gave Harper like 15 more minutes on Roblox. Once that 15 minutes was up, she never requested it again. She went upstairs and started coloring. She just knew like, hey, mom gave me an extra 15 minutes. She took the 15 minutes, but then she just knew not to ask again. Okay, so in here, this is where you guys can say which apps that you want them to have and how long. Lastly is downtime. So downtime, you can do a schedule. Schedule turns on downtime for the time period you select. A downtime reminder will appear five minutes before downtime. So for some reason, I don't know, Kenzie must have bugged me or something at 8.51. So 8.52, I said we were done. So 8.52, everything, even if she hasn't used her time, everything goes dark except for the ones that I said always allow. Okay, so everything goes dark even if she hasn't used her 30 minutes. And then at 6 a.m., things light up again. And these reset um, at midnight. Or no, sorry, the apps do at midnight. This is whatever time that you guys decide. 
So block that downtime. Again, she can ask for more time, but you guys can approve it or not. Okay, so I said it. this is gonna be interactive. I would like to know from your group, if you guys have iPhones, let's look at our screen time, right? So you guys can do this with your kids' as phones too, but if you go to settings, and then you go to screen time, so not on family sharing, but you go to screen time, it's in the second piece here. And if you go to see all activity right underneath your usage, and this is where you would be able to see your kids' activity too, but um, I don't know if I'm gonna share how much I'm on my phone. Um, <laughs> so, so you can see most used, um, you can see daily pickups. So that's interesting. How many times are we picking up our device? And then it actually sh shows the apps, the first used after pickup. So as soon as you pick it up, so it's actually calculating what you pick up or after you pick up what app that you use. Um, how many notifications that you get. It's, it's really eye-opening how much time that we spend on our stuff and again you know if we're going to give our kids restrictions too I think we should know where we're at to what we need to work on and I heard a sermon one time where um, he was talking about temptation with the devil and stuff like that and he's like do you know how much the devil loves these phones because all he has to do is just be like oh there's a notification oh I'm distracted oh here's another notification Oh, there's Google Photos that just created a memory for me, right? Those little distractions are is, is what the devil really wants, right? So that we don't have time for God. And I think that's something that we can talk to our kids about. Why are we doing this? It's because it's not healthy, but also we can be doing so much more with our time. Ugh, three hours. Total pickups, uh, 217 not good. And I'm checking work emails. So there's a little bit about my pickups. So <laughs> we're not judging you. That's okay. Um, apps outside of Apple. So this, we, we get this question quite a bit. So you can set up all the restrictions that you want within iOS. Okay. But if there's a third party app, you need to make sure that you set up restrictions with that too. So if you allow the Netflix app, you need to make sure that there's parental controls on that app. If you have Hulu, TikTok, Snapchat, you have to set up separate parameters for that because they're a third party app. So if you do allow them to have those apps, just make sure you go into those apps and you make those restrictions because those do not translate over because it's a third party app. We'll talk a little bit. Do all of those apps have like settings area? Like, mm -hmm. like in TikTok it has a settings. Yes. They all have that. They pretty much, I didn't like Hulu for a long time because they really kind of had, they did not have good parental controls. So it was like, I don't know if I really, because it didn't require a passcode just to, to view the mom and dad profile. And you guys know when they do previews, even the previews can be disturbing, right? So um, I would check those before you give access to your child for a third party app. Make sure that you can do parental controls on those. In a little bit, we'll talk about the newest thing with Snapchat, which is the My AI or Al. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Shelly. She's gonna talk about Android. Perfect. All right. So it sounds like a lot of this room probably has Apple. Um, but you may run into where you get your child a Chromebook someday. Um, they might start with that rather than just having an iPhone. So um, this first page, we're gonna talk about how to set up Google Family Link, how to set up digital ground rules, manage your child's account and stay connected and know for peace of mind. Now the reason we picked this one, we just want you guys to realize there are other apps out there that you can use to 
uh, guide your child in the right direction. This is a free one, so that's partly why we went this way. Same thing with Apple. Uh, there's a Bark that's out there, and there's a premium that costs $14, and then there's a lower end that costs $5. So, first off, if your child does not have a Gmail account, you will have to set that up for them. You can do that either on the new device that they have, or you can do it on your device and just hit sign in with a new Gmail, pick child, and then the next screen here will show you on the left, that's setting it up, putting in their birth date. Um, someone recommended on Monday that to set it five years younger than what they actually are. Um, that way you have a little bit more control as they get older and that sort of thing. It's not that you don't trust them, it's so that way you can guide them a little bit more um, and that sort of thing. Another thing, uh, some people put rather not say because the web is an amazing thing out there and you'd be surprised at how many people can find out if your daughter or son is a female or male. Um, so they do that to protect them. When some parents that I deal with uh, did that to their six and seven year old, I was like, man, I thought we grew up in a Christian community. But now after they talk to me a little bit about it, I get why they put rather not say. Um, to the right, is a screenshot of what it would look like if your child already has a Gmail. So you would open up settings in their um, phone, go to Google, and then hit parental controls. In the Chromebook, you would go to people, and then hit parental controls. So you follow those steps, and it'll be the same steps as it would be setting up the Gmail account. All right, digital ground rules and screen time. When you first set up limits, you can choose weekdays or weekend times. So if you see on that uh, top screen, it's set daily limits, and you can change these at any time. So the second screen is, if Tommy doesn't have his homework done, and you want to limit his daily thing to one hour or 30 minutes, or even only 15 minutes, you can change that date, today's limit, at any time. So every day you can customize to fit whatever your schedule allows you to do. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then downtime, you can decide if on the weekends, they can use it a little bit more, and that sort of thing. All right, just like iPhones, we have restrictions that you can make in the Samsung. So there's six. Um, YouTube, honestly, people either don't let their kids use it, or there's a kid's YouTube that they allow them to do. Um, and the cool thing with Google, and I'll show you this down the road, but with their required approval apps, all content is sent to the parent. So this shows up. So to the left is Ask Your Parent. That will be on the kid's phone that's going to download the app. They can either ask in person, so hand their phone to their parent and say, hey, can I have this? Then the parent has to type in their Google password for their email address, not the kid's theirs. Asking a message, the second screenshot there shows that it'll go to the parent's phone. The parent has 24 hours to approve or deny it. If you miss that window, the child will have to then resubmit the request. So it's pretty cool how quickly it can happen. Once you get approved, it starts downloading on the child's phone. Next thing, limit on apps on the phone. So here will be all the list of apps that you approve for your child to use. Some people allow their kid to go on Gmail. A lot of children should not probably have an email address. They could probably email whoever they wanted to then. Um, some people don't like their kids to have access to camera and send and receive pictures. So you can itemize this however you would like it. The cool thing is you also have the option to block limit time, and then always allow them to be on that app. So you can change that as well. Like if your kid does not understand the responsibility that it takes to have an app and you thought, oh, I thought you were there, but you're not quite there, you can always change that. So that's really cool with iPhone or Samsung. Um, this is a cool thing. All right, account data. This is what I think is the awesome part about it. You can see the activity that your child uses. So if they're searching on, an, on Google Chrome, you can look to see what websites they were on, 
You can also go into their YouTube history. So that's one of the nice things that I think is very worthwhile just as a parent. And it's always good to do a self-check on your child as well. Hey, can I see your phone? Not just random times, just so they're like, oh, I never know when my parents are gonna grab my phone, so I better make sure I'm doing the right things. So just as a parent, it's always good to check in with your kid. It's not because you're nosy, it's just to make sure, hey, are we being responsible with what God gave us to use? Uh, stay connected on the go. I really like this as well. You can see where your child is at all times. Uh, you also can set boundary limits. So when they leave home, um, and Jenny will talk about this a little bit more with Life360 here in a little bit. But when they leave home, you can set if they're supposed to be at school. So like this next screen here, if I had three children, they would be Casey, Blake, and Emma. <laughs> but I don't. So uh, anyways. So Casey's at school like a good kid. Blake decided to hit the movies during school, and oh. Emma decided to go get a milkshake at uh, Rob's Cafe. <laughs> so it'll show me when they arrive and when they leave if I have it set that way. So that's really cool. You can always know where your kids are at. It also tells me when, how much battery life they have on their phones. So if their phone's about ready to die, might want to send them a message, hey, you should plug it in. So. <laughs> You're in control. I really like this feature. Um, because you can lock it, the phone down at any time. So if they, if you have a lot of parents set a time limit like 9 o'clock, your devices are on our counter. So you can go to bed, wind down. Having screen time 30 minutes before bed is never really good. It's not good for us adults, believe it or not. But how many of us sit in bed and we're like, ah, YouTube, oh yeah. So this is cool because you can hit and do lock. So what happens is, the kid's device says it's all black, and it says time for a break. And the only person that they can contact is adults. So if that device was live, which is a dummy device, instead of emergency, it would give them options to call mom or dad. They can also call 911 as well, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then you can also give bonus time with this feature, just like Jimmy was talking about with iPhone. If they've been really good, you want to give them an extra 15 minutes. You can do that all right here, and that's all on the home screen for the Google link. So, with that, uh, same thing as iPhone, you can do the settings in Hulu, um, TikTok, and Netflix. I know a lot of people are a little hesitant right now with uh, Snapchat. They came out with Al. How many of you have, you can do it, show of hands if you want to, or if not. Al is an interesting, we don't know if he's a guy or a girl or just a computer, but uh, I play around with him a lot because I have an iPhone as well. And even if you have a Samsung, it's just on Snapchat. So you can text him to the same question twice in a row and you'll get a different answer, which I find phenomenal. Um, so like I put in, you want to go to the park? And he goes, I don't know where you're at. And then I said, well, search near parks near me. And he could nail a park within a half a mile of where I was. So really, I think he knows where I am. So the only way to get rid of him is to pay for Snapchat. And I personally haven't even researched how much that costs yet. But it is something, especially if you're going to allow your kid to be on Snapchat, it is something to look into as a parent because Snapchat can be super dangerous. Um, I learned that in Sioux Center dealing with suicide Christian stuff when they went through that with a teacher. Um, it just can be super dangerous. So I just encourage you guys, if you're going to allow your kids to do it, to really set some guidelines and really follow them strictly. So uh, with that, I'll hand it back to Jenny. Yeah, the, the Snapchat L or whatever, there is, there's, but that just happened just in this last week. Uh, so as we were preparing for this, it was something that, again, had changed. And I think what's disturbing about it is that it's not a real person. So your child could be developing a, a relationship with someone that's not real. And that just is, that's hard to wrap your head around, but it's, that, that's really what it is. Um, there were some screenshots I saw of a 13-year-old that was chatting with, with, the computer and hey do you want to go to the park I was talking about and then she was asking do you are you a boy well of course I'm a boy why wouldn't I be a boy and then it, again it's not a real person 
and this person, you know, they're just wasting all this time chatting with that. So have a conversation with your kids, definitely about that. So Life 360, how many of you have Life 360 already? Yeah, so Life 360 is a location sharing app. So this really is just to track the phone, okay? So this doesn't, Life 360 doesn't do a lot of like the parental controls uh, as far as like time limit and all that. I wanted to share this because I think this would be important for drivers. So if you have a driver um, or teenage drivers, uh, location history. So you can see the history of the path that they took. Um, and it, and they, <clears throat> they don't have to be in your car. This is obviously with their phone. So were you at so-and-so's house when I told you not to be? You can track where they were with location history there. Is there any difference between 360 and the Find My Phone app? Yeah, so Find My, find my Phone, yep. So Find My Phone doesn't give a location history, right? Or, right, it does not, yeah. So, like if I wanted to track the kids right now, I can see where they are currently, but I wouldn't be able to see a history of where they were. Mm -hmm. Yep. So place alerts, um, Life360 does a nice job with this too, so you can set up places that you want alerts for. Um, so you can have those alerts set in place. Crash detection is pretty cool. Um, so even again, even if they're not in your vehicle because the phone is with them, they can, um, you guys would be able to see if emergency services are on the way where it was. So this is a something very nice. Driver reports. So you can actually see, um, again, the path that they took, but then top speed, phone usage, how much were they on their phone during that drive, high speed, heartbreaking, and rapid itself. I hope my husband doesn't have this. <laughs> so, but you can, you can get driver's reports. And again, this is really, again, kind of back to that why. Like, this is not to be big brother. It's more of, hey, we care about you. We want you to be safe. You could award, you know, reward good driving from this too, which I think is a, is a good idea. But again, this is, you know, just good to know. Um, hell, I can't imagine having this when I was in high school. <laughs> All right, memberships. So a lot of people do a free membership. So you can subscribe to this. Two days of location history, two places with unlimited alert, and then you have family driving summary and SOS help. So if you don't wanna pay for this, you do have a, a free option. And then gold is the most popular, it's $15 a month. 30 days of location history, uh, unlimited place alerts, and then they have some um, phone and fund reimbursement and protection there. And then even better with platinum, where you get 30 days, 50 miles, um, reimbursement and phone stolen there. So we are, we, we don't get paid to tell you that Life360 is awesome, it's just a good app that a lot of families use. So, um, any other things with Life360? One of the things I recently discovered with Life360 is that uh, kids can communicate with each other through that. Like, so kids have been giving each other their access to their Life360 oh. and then they will, like if text messaging is turned off, they'll, because Life360 in most cases will always be on. Sure, yeah. You know, always loud. And so then kids will communicate with each other through Life360, which I just figured that out. Yeah. They will find a way. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know about, you know, Instagram. Instagram, you have messaging within Instagram too, but I didn't know that there's vanishing messaging within Instagram. And so, unfortunately, there was some things that happened with some of our friends because of that. And I was like, well, I didn't know that, but they can send messages and have them vanish as well. So um, we'll open it up for questions, but again, just really wanna encourage you guys, if you already have given your child a device without any parental 
controls or something, it's not too late. You can get that device back, you can start over, you can, it, it never is too late. If you gave your child access to something and they're not handling it well, you can take it away, right? It's, you know, you can tell them that my kids don't have anything on their phone, right? So uh, just encourage you to get the why behind it. Um, I think is encouraging too for your kids to know like this is not just me trying to control you it's because I care about you and some of this stuff is is just not healthy it's amazing how long even us how long we can just scroll and scroll and scroll and just watch endlessly something and all of a sudden you're like oh man there went 30 minutes right so um, yeah I can open it up for questions